G'day brewers, uh, in this series of three videos I'm going to teach you how to build a yeast propagator capable of producing enough yeast for about mm, 10 barrels, 10 hectolitres and it's going to cost you less than 500 bucks. Let's get brewing, or rather should I say let's get propagating. So I often speak to a lot of uh, craft breweries out there who are growing and when they usually start out they usually have, they use, use dry yeast like you know uh, Fermentus or uh, the Lalaman yeast and they're really really good options for starting out uh, but unfortunately what doesn't happen is you don't get that choice in lots of different strains of yeast and becomes really difficult to create your own house flavor and that sort of thing. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build a yeast propagator so you can propagate your own yeast in your own brewery, save heaps of money, get some, um, you know, your own house flavor, uh, get that flexibility, uh, open up a wide variety of yeast strains uh, in your beers and generally make better beer. So let's take a look at what it takes to build the $500 yeast propagator. So shout out to Kegland for uh, sponsoring this video. Um, they pretty much supplied everything for this uh, yeast propagator and I'm super grateful to Key and the crew for uh, lending a hand. Uh, so basically what we've got here is I've got a Firmzilla all-rounder. Basically what that is is that's basically a plastic HDPE fermenter and it's able to handle pressure and um, it's going to basically be our propagation vessel. Uh, it's got the, why, the reason why I use the all-rounder, it's got some qualities that are super important for um, uh, our propagation, uh, and you'll see that coming up shortly. So with the Firmzilla, the next thing we've got is we've got the um, pressure kit. Uh, we're gonna need the pressure kit because we're gonna be putting air into the propagator. Uh, and then we're going to need to get yeast out of it as well. Uh, what I've got here is a couple of sterile filters. They're 0 0.45 micron uh, sterile filters. Bacteria are about half a micron wide. Um, so with these uh, sterile filters being 0.45 micron, it gives our propagator a, uh, a sterile source of air uh, to make the yeast go into propagation mode. Uh, we've got a few fittings here. So firstly, we've got uh, two gas and one beer uh, fitting for our pressure kit. They basically go on the lid here. I'll show you that shortly. Uh, we've got a T piece which actually goes onto the pressure kit because uh, we kind of need an extra connection. Uh, what we've got here is we've got a carbonation stone. Uh, this is the two micron carbonation stone. We want nice big bubbles in this. Next thing we need is the Firmzilla float ball. This is so that we can get the yeast uh, out of the propagator. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need some silicon hose, okay? So make sure that you've got uh, the right type of silicon hose. Uh, as you can see here, uh, that silicon hose is quite thick. Uh, I think it's about two millimeter in thickness. Uh, you can't use Eva Barrier or any type of beer dispense hose uh, because it's going to melt in the autoclave and you'll see that in uh, part two. Um, how we do all the autoclaving and that sort of thing. The next thing we need is some corny keg fittings. These are actually really cool ones that Kegland come up with now. Uh, and so basically the idea of these is that these can actually be uh, pulled apart really easy and they've got a built-in John Guest fitting and uh, they're also autoclavable. Uh, and so that's gonna help us get air in. So I've got two gas and one beer slash yeast. So, so, <laughs> so black is for yeast in this application. And um, uh, so that's gonna help us get air in and out and get yeast out when we need to get yeast out and that sort of thing, okay? The next thing that we're gonna need is uh, a source of air, okay? Uh, and so this is my 40 liter a minute uh, aquarium pump. Uh, as you can see here, this is a magnetic drive uh, aquarium pump. And uh, what it does is it gives us a hell of a lot of air because we need lots of oxygen to make the yeast flick over into propagation mode so they can create lots of biomass. Uh, and the other thing that would, the last thing we need is we need our Kegland work whipper, okay? So this is basically a uh, magnetic stir plate and uh, I'll just open it up here. And so I've got our magnetic stir plate. I've also got 
a egg-shaped uh, magnetic stir bar. Uh, and the reason why I've got this egg-shaped ma magnetic stir bar is this is actually going to go into the bottom of the yeast propagator, uh, so as so we can actually stir the propagation uh, to keep the yeast in suspension, and also to knock the CO2 out of solution, so that we can force more oxygen into solution with our uh, aquarium pump and uh, our carbonation stone and that sort of thing. So that's pretty much all we need. Okay, so let's build out our yeast propagator. Okay, so let's start with the pressure kit. So what we need to do is we want to make sure that this is this has only got two holes in it uh, and our safety um, pressure relief valve in it and that sort of thing. So what we want to do is we actually want to make three in here. Now, uh, this is great. Uh, I used to drill holes in the old versions of this that I made, but you can actually do that without drilling. So it's really, really simple. So, um, so what I've got is I've got my three uh, corner keg posts here. So two are going to be for air, one's for air in, one's for air out, and this one is to get the yeast out. So the way in which we put the pressure kit together, very, very simple. I'm just going to take the pressure relief valve out temporarily. Okay. I then grab the T-piece here. I'm just gonna screw that on. All this stuff screws on just hand tight. It's just so simple. Just screw that on there. Till, till it's hand tight like that. Now we've got three um, ports for corner keg fittings to go onto our pressure kit. Uh, and so our two air ones go onto the T-piece. So just one simply goes on there. One simply goes on here, and the third one goes straight onto here. Okay, very, very simple. All right, now the thing is, is that this one's just a vent, so that can stay. We actually need to put dip tubes on this one here and this one here. So this one is for the yeast out, and this one is for the air going in. Okay, so let's set that up. I'll just what I can simply do is with the one where the uh, yeast comes out, I've got my silicon hose with the ball underneath you'll see that there's a barb fitting just gonna push that on like so there we go easy peasy on goes the uh, float ball next thing we want to do is we want to connect up our uh, carbonation stone now for our air so what I'm going to do is I'm just actually just it's much easier just to take this one off okay take that off Connect this up like so. Just push that on there like so. Get my carbonation stone. Uh, make sure you don't touch the carbonation stone with your fingers. So I'm just gonna keep it in the bag like so. It's just another barb fitting. And it's just gonna go barb fitting into the end. Like so. And that is our air in fitting. Now the really easy part is is that because that's quite skinny that just can just got a slot right through the t-piece there straight through like so screw it up nice and tight and what you have there is you have your pressure kit all set up really really simple okay one there's our carbonation stone there's our float valve for getting yeast out i'll pop the um, pressure relief valve back on and it's good to go. So the next thing I'll do is I'll bring the Firmzilla into the mix so you can actually see how it connects up to the Firmzilla. So. Here's my Firmzilla sitting on the, uh, on the uh, tray that it comes on. And basically how this works is it just basically dangles in like so. Pushes on, seals up. And then I need to get the lid here to secure it. Now, this isn't going to go on straight away like so. So I just need to loosen it a little bit. Bring the lid on. Tighten it up like so. Tighten up the T-piece again. And it's ready to go. So, let's get some water in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the lid off. So I'm just going to uh, just bring that in like so. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Take the lid off. Take the lid out. Oh, there we go. Jeez, nice tight seal, isn't it? All right. 
Let's get some water in there. So we've got about 15 litres of water in here and the next thing that I need to do is to um, grab the wort whipper, the magnetic stir, um, the stir bar and the stir plate, okay. Um, the reason why we have the magnetic stir bar and, and stir plate underneath is we want to be able to move the yeast around during propagation. What that actually does is it knocks CO2 out of solution so that we can make room for more oxygen to go in via our sterile air supply. Okay, so here's how we're going to set that up. So I've got here my wort whipper. Thank you, Kegland. Now, if I bring the wort whipper out and stick that directly underneath, you'll see that there is a gap between uh, the bottom of the firmzilla and the top of the wort whipper. Okay, that wort whipper actually needs to be touching the plastic. Okay, so. How are we going to deal with that? Here, yeah, here's a really easy solution. What you do is you get the foam packaging that's inside it, right? Flip it upside down, grab the wort whipper, stick it on top of the part where it was sitting in there, and then what you can actually do is you can actually shimmy that under, and as you can see now, the uh, wort whipper is firmly touching the. Um, the bottom of the firmzilla. Next thing I need to make sure is if I have a look in the top, uh, I want to make sure that the wort whipper is nice and centered, which is looking like it's centered there. Okay. Next thing I want is I want to get my magnetic stir bar. So here's my magnetic stir bar here. Make sure you get the egg shaped one. The reason why I got the egg shaped one uh, is that uh, I just want to make sure that the egg shape matches the bottom of the the round bottom of the firmzilla all rounder all right so let's just drop that in in she goes and as you can see on the top uh, it's already connected up to the wort whipper okay so let's give the wort whipper a crack so wort whippers underneath stir bar is in the top all right let's just turn it on and see what happens Now, we want the wort whipper to go flat out, so I'm just going to crank this right up. And away she goes. Okay, so the next step is, let's get our uh, pressure kid lit, lid, and just pop that into the yeast propagator. In she goes. You'll notice I'm not being particularly sterile at the moment. Before you go, leave nasty comments in the comments section. We're going to be autoclaving this and cleaning it, and that's coming up in the next episode of this video so relax relax everybody so let's uh, let's get this lid on nice tight seal seal up our t-piece like so okay now we're ready to hook up our air supply and our vent so let's hook up our vent first so our one off to the side here is our vent There we go, and then we can hook up our sterile air supply. Now you'll notice uh, that it's not quite long enough because I'm a bit of a doofus. I'm going to sit this on my other magnetic stir bar, which is sitting right here. Bring that over like so, nice and close. Bring that up to the top. On she goes, right? So there's our aquarium pump. There's our sterile filter going in and going down into the carbonation stone. You'll see now that our float ball is doing its job and it's floating. That's to get our yeast out. Uh, that's We need the float ball. It's the only way you're going to get yeast out. Okay, So that is basically ready for Red Hot Go. Let's fire it up. Hey, before we fire up the yeast propagator, I just want to tell you about my free Facebook group. It's called Quality Focus Pro Brewers. I post loads of bonus content over there, and it's also a great source for asking questions and getting answers. Link in the description below. 
Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the magnetic stir bar. So let's just start that up like so. Crank it right up. Crank it right up, all right, away she goes. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our air. So, successful water test uh, of the $500 craft brewery yeast propagator. Uh, it's really easy to set up, really easy to build, but the challenge starts now because the next step that we've got to do is we've got to make our propagator aseptic because the thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to be infecting 10 hectolitres or 10 barrels of, of wort uh, when we go and pitch this in the brewery. If you want the plans to build the $500 yeast propagator, head to rockstarbrewer.com forward slash yeast propagator and I'll send you a PDF with all the plans in it uh, and you can go and build it for yourself and brew some amazing beer. Uh, thanks heaps for watching. I'll see you guys in part two, which is making this uh, yeast propagator aseptic. See you in the next video.